the thing we got wrong was the market. <laughs> like that's the thing we got wrong. Like it worked out. So I'm not complaining, but like some of these markets are not big enough. Like they seem big. Mm-hmm. Oh, subscription companies everywhere. It's like there are 150,000 max subscription companies in the world. That includes subscription media. Yeah. It includes subscription memberships. Um, subscription SaaS, subscription consumer, enterprise subscription, there's 150,000 max. Like we're not talking about wow. e-commerce startups where there's like millions of stores and millions are coming on board like every couple of years, right? It's hard to sell a product that's underappreciated just in general, like metrics in mm-hmm. general. It's hard to sell that in a market where there is a viable free alternative where even if you like, you didn't really like the design as much because people love Josh's design or Maybe Chart Mogul mm-hmm. had a couple extra features than we did. Like, it's really hard to compete with it unless, you know, your product like is 10x better and there wasn't going to be a 10x better product in the market because we were going to keep moving. And I just don't think there can be a 10x better product in analytics in general. Your comment about the market being small is so interesting. The, the characteristics of a market, the size, the shape, and the dynamics. Guides everything. Do you have any idea of size? And like, if yeah. you guys were out to own the market, was 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 ProfitWell number one by a large margin, or did Chart Mogul have a significant portion as well? Uh, we have thirty thousand subscription companies on ProfitWell. So now more than thirty thousand, okay. and then Chart Mogul has one to two thousand. Bear metrics had about a thousand. Okay. Might be a little bit more. But yeah, so I I think I think wow. the other thing to point out here that you kind of brought up is the physics of a market guides so many things. Like and yes. a lot of people don't realize like even if let's say we just wanted to be a lifestyle business, we wanted a great business that like guided, you know, all of our lives, made us all very wealthy, everyone was like, you know, had really great profit from the entire company. We were a great company to work for, et cetera. Um 20,000 customers paying a hundred dollars a month. Oh my God, what a grind. Right. And I can tell you right now yes. for most of the market, a hundred dollars a month is too expensive. Like it's, it's insane. Yeah. Right. And so what we, we yeah. basically like, honestly, the worst thing, like the thing we got wrong was the market. <laughs> like that's the thing we got wrong. Like it worked out. So I'm not complaining, but like We knew, like, as we started getting into, like, we're trying to be a big company, like, we knew our TAM was not big enough. Like, our TAM, the way we monetize, and even though we were monetizing our leads better than anyone else in the space, because with Retain, someone who wasn't willing to pay $50 a month for metrics is willing to pay $300 a month because it's purely pay for performance, right? So they're like, I wouldn't have had this money, Mm -hmm. and you're not, you're only taking, you know, a portion of the money I would have gained, and I get to keep all the, all the money later, Right. So it's one of those things like even though yeah. we were we were squeezing more out of this this lemon than anyone else it was one of those things that like that's where this multi product concept came to be and also why like it was kind of appealing to sell too because the billing systems just have an ability to monetize even no, better than anyone else because they can monetize the throughput right yeah and so there's a yeah. lot we can do with that with like retain as well as some of the other products we're building but the advice to anyone else listening is like yeah Don't underestimate the velocity of your market because even if you're building something that like is in a super competitive space, especially if you're building something in a competitive space, like if the market's big enough, that's fine. Like you can make a great, like Mm -hmm. again, lifestyle business. But if you're in a market that is squeezed and it has competition, like go into Mm -hmm. another market. Um, Unless you're really yeah. just glutton for punishment. Can we get into this a bit yeah, more? Right. Because I, it feels like this is the area that, that gets misunderstood a lot. And um, so you said TAM, which is total... Addressable market. Total addressable market. It's, yeah. You can define it a little bit differently. Like all metrics, like you can kind of fudge with the definition depending on what you're trying to do, right? So yeah, like there's 150,000 subscription companies. Maybe that's our total addressable market, but like our realistic addressable market, um, there's other, you know, acronyms people use. It's like, I can tell you out of those 150,000, 75,000 are just not addressable for us because enterprise companies, they're too big. They're, you know, they don't fit our billing systems. We support. Too small? Uh, Yeah, totally. Like all over the place, right? 
And so mm -hmm. it's, it's more about like, I think in an investor pitch or just in an adventure back company or trying to be a big company, you want a very large TAM because that means that the yeah. future, like if I just capture X percent of the TAM, right? Um, I think yeah. in a bootstrap company or a lifestyle business, you don't necessarily have to worry about, oh my God, I have to pitch something that has a huge adjustable market. But if you have a very large adjustable market, it's probably an indication of like the ease of your go-to-market strategy because yeah. everyone already has one of these things and I'm just going to sell a different one. You know, that type of it. Yeah. I'm trying to invent yeah. a market. Yes. You, and, and you also talk about the velocity. So what do you mean by velocity when you're, when you're, when you use that as a descriptor or the physics of a market? Yeah, uh, totally. What are you talking about there? So things around like it's, it's the number of logos in the market, like number of potential buyers. And again, it's mm -hmm. not like, like if we're selling in a subscription company, it's not every subscription company or if it's like we're selling a consumer product, it's not every consumer. It's people who fit some sort of a segment. That's our addressable market theoretically. Um, mm -hmm. And the bigger that segment is just the number of humans that theoretically will go to your landing page is just increased. And the number of humans yes. you're able to like, market to, right? So the reason our strategy for marketing is what it is, is not because Patrick has a big ego and really likes to do podcasts. The reason yeah. it is, is because we need a brand. We need people to know who we are. And you don't get that through paid media. You get that through content. You get that through community. You get that through events. You get that through those types of things. So that when you're talking to someone, Justin, about, hey, I need metrics for my subscription business. You go, mm -hmm. well, you know, there's a couple, but I know Profile is free, right? And so, yeah. you know, and Patrick's on the podcast and like, you should check it out, but also check out Bear Metrics and whatever. And then that's all I need. I just need you to refer to it yes. because when they get into the product, they're going to compare and contrast it. And the product is good enough, if not better in certain ways that they're going to stay, yeah. right? And so that's, that's what I mean is like, if you are selling to like a fitness product, your TAM is huge because there's so many people are trying to get healthy. And yeah, you can drive that through paid and through, um, you know, display ads and all these other things. You don't really need a brand. You don't really need content unless you're doing an SEO play yeah. in that case. And so that's what I mean by the physics is like, how many people can you get through yeah. in a very quick manner um, into your well, funnel, basically? And how important do you feel the, because even in your example, the physics there are that some people are already in motion. Yep. M many founders feel like you can motivate uh, people who are not in motion to buy the product. Yep. So what's your take on that? Because in your example, there's two people in Slack and somebody is looking for SaaS metrics, which means they're already in motion. They already yep. have a company. They already, totally. like think of all the things they have to do to just get to the starting line yep. of profit well. This is another- <laughs> right? So what's your take yeah, on that? Another huge mistake. Um, right now in like the average- subscription or SaaS company, depending on how you want to slice it, the median expenses that go to sales and marketing is 60%, 60%. So if I take 1200 companies, I think the study was, I add up every dollar they're spending on everything, toilet paper, yeah. ads, everything in between, right? And 60% of those dollars are going to sales and marketing. Now you throw in operations, you throw in like the desks and everything like that. How much money do you think is left over for retention and pricing, which are two mm. paid products? There's not a lot. Yes. And so we're literally like, we spent 10 years yelling about pricing and yelling about retention and mm -hmm. people get it. Like people find it important, but like we are constantly educating and we're fighting this inertia of, yes, there's five, there's 15,000 different sales and marketing pieces of software, right? So there's a huge, a hugely different problem there. But that's another thing, right? Yeah. Like we're not selling something, like it's rare that someone like is looking for like Dunning or credit card failure software, right? And we try to own those mm -hmm. places obviously, but it's a lot of education. And I think that you're better off finding people in motion with something. So if I was just trying to like create Oh, I'm going to work on something for six months and I want to get it to a hundred grand a year and like revenue. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I would focus on things where people are already in motion, huge TAM, meaning lots of people. Um, and 
we don't always build these things for money. I actually love like the SaaS and subscription community like a lot. Like I, I you know, and so yeah. it's one of those things where like it's not all about the money. It's not all about the TAM, but it's like if I wanted to make it easy, those are the things that I would look for. And then the the third yeah. piece is lock in. I would try to build a product that had lock in, like. Mm-hmm. What's amazing about billing systems, there's so much lock-in. <laughs> like people mm-hmm. like they install it and they're like there's only a couple points in their history that they they want to change it or are thinking of changing it. And that's a whole yeah. new problem for for paddle now that or I'm discovering at paddle, but it's also the brilliance yeah. of like the Stripe Atlas program. Like the brilliance of the Stripe. Mm-hmm. I always thought, oh, that's just them being nice and like, you know, giving back to the community. And and part of it is, but another part of that program mm-hmm. is once you got that Stripe account, like why would you why would you yeah. like do anything else, right? And then normally we see people who reach like seven hundred thousand a year to about a million a year. That's the next like then they're looking at charge B, recurly, paddle, et cetera. But um yeah, it's, yeah. The lock in, yeah. if you can get lock in is is the third thing I would look for. But it's not as crucial as the first two. I think. 